The Eritrean frontline situation has altered extraordinarily since I was last here. The Eritreans had a trench line up in the north near Nakfa, and they've now moved on about eight hours drive from there, so that they are threatening from both the north and the south the highland town of Keren, which is just over this hill. And as well as that, the nearest point in this trench line to Asmara is only 65 kilometers from that ancient and sacred capital, which is in fact the, the Jerusalem of the Eritreans. The Eritrean passion for education extends right up to the front line, where we found soldiers from the support trenches sitting in class. They pursued these Eritreans, the ideal of honorable warriorhood. I couldn't quite believe it achievable and yet the trenches were impeccably maintained, as if intended to be the martial face of the Eritrean educational ferment. From high points, we saw their line snaking to exploit every contour of the ridge. It would be terrible to be sent to take it, to be an Ethiopian child, loaded with your assigned weaponry and kit, arriving out of breath to face the massed English grammar of the Eritreans. The rest of the world doesn't seem particularly interested in what happens here unless there's a famine on, which they tend to identify with drought rather than with this horrifying war. It's easy for a visitor to the trenches to, as the Americans say, get off on the warriorhood of the Eritreans, but that's a self-indulgence. When you see those young Ethiopian corpses who have been thrown away in, in recent offensives, uh, then you realize that for pity's sake, international forces have to settle this business. Perhaps 20 paces from me, unburied and sun mummified, Ethiopian corpses lay in shreds of uniform. Again, I dropped back down the parapet breathless. I felt their terror, the anguish, the scalding loss of breath of stunned conscripts solidified there on the slope. Full of hope and desperation and madness, they'd been driven this far uphill from their own trenches. And then the Eritreans had ended their search. Darcy is younger and a little prettier than me, but the effect of the journey on him is more or less the same as it was on me. Uh, I was astounded by the possibilities of this society where women are given such uh, opportunities, where education is ubiquitous, where there's such planning for the future, where they're, they're training uh, kids in bunkers for uh, the late 20th century computer age. Uh, it is an astonishing society of which hardly anyone in the world has heard. It could, in fact, be on another planet in the solar system for all most people know about it. And therefore, Darcy does feel that he's entering a strangeness. And he feels that he is nearly uh, on the verge of, of witnessing a moral evolution in mankind, the evolution from a just revolution to a just republic. And this transition is discussed continuously by these soldiers in bunkers just like this. It is an extraordinary sensitivity they have to the perils of a revolution when it becomes a government. <laughs> 